right. So um, around 1878, uh, Leland Stanford, who's actually the founder of Stanford University, really wanted to know when horses run, do they have their hooves all in the air or one of them on the ground? So what he did, he commissioned and he hired Edward Moybridge, a British photographer, and asked him to take photos of horses running. So what he did, he came up with a technique which was basically like stop animation. When others looked at Edward Moybridge's technology and ideas, they found out that they can actually take still photographs and add motion to it. This is when Thomas Edison came up with Nickelodeon. They would actually look into it and drop a nickel in it, hence called Nickelodeon, and you would rotate mechanically uh, these, these films. Edwin Porter uh, creates The Great Train Robbery, which is considered one of the first narrative films. It actually told a story without having curtains to be closed, without having intermissions and all that stuff. You could change scenes on a wall instantly. And that was a big deal back then. So a lot of experimentation happened and filmmakers, they learned by mistake and by accident, that sort of things. RCA slash NBC, they did a test and they, for the first time, they broadcast an image of Felix the Cat. And that was a huge breakthrough because now you didn't need to be physically present to see your film. 1940 was when the first cable TV was created. And the reason cable TV was created was because certain households that were too far away and they were blocked by mountains or whatnot, they couldn't receive uh, TV signals or broadcast signals uh, through. So they actually had to draw physical cable to these households. 1941, the best film in America was created. That was Citizen Kane by Orson Welles. And to this day, the techniques that you see in movies and films today, they're the techniques that was invented and used by Orson Welles and Citizen Kane. Uh, 1950s is considered to be the golden ages of television. There were a lot of great shows. One of them that really stands out is I Love Lucy. And the reason that stands out on this timeline is because it really changed uh, the image of women on television. Basically what, what I Love Lucy did is show that women can be themselves. We come to 1971, that's when Fred Friendly created Access Television. Basically that idea that each community needs to have its own nonprofit uh, community network television so that you would see on TV what's happening in your area. Now we enter the 90s. There was a lot of things happening in the 90s. It was a very, very busy year. So the first important thing that happened was that Sir Tim Berners-Lee uh, basically invented the first web browser. Um, Apple created QuickTime Video, so now we could watch film and videos on our computers. DVD players were introduced. As we enter in 2000s, um, two major uh, innovations happened. One was that YouTube was introduced, which later on was purchased by Google and Netflix started streaming its services instead of mailing you DVDs. What's happening now is that Oculus Rift was introduced Whoa. and um, 360 video, virtual reality and augmented reality. These three types of technologies are going to have a huge impact on entertainment and even the film industry and how we experience film. Um, what's going to happen next? Well, we don't know, but we're sitting at a crossroads in entertainment. Now imagine this, if it weren't for Leland Stanford and his curiosity about horses running around, the question is, would we be here?